Kern Goldwater, my good friend, ABC News 4 main anchor, Dean Stevens, and that's got to be the primary story here. The Skeezer schools have been going at this now since June. Everything, according to most coaches, has been swimmingly according to plan. And now for Hammond, it's week two. For Porter Gout, it's week one. I think we have now crossed that barrier, which was a huge question mark. Would we play football? Would we have a week one of Friday Night Rivals? And we do this first weekend of September. It's the second game for Hammond. They've already picked up a victory last week. C.J. Stokes, who's one of the top running backs in all of South Carolina, he was on display week one. We should look for a lot of him here tonight. Listen, Hammond has been truly the powerhouse of Skiza for the last 15 years or so, and they have seen big nine, big name guys come into this program and leave to go to Division One programs. This is the next guy. C.J. Stokes ran for 119 yards last week, three touchdowns against Ben Lippin. I asked Brad Bowles, the head coach of the Cyclones, now in his second year, what's the key to the Cyclones this year? He said, we go as far as Matt Kelly, the quarterback, takes us. I've watched Matt Kelly since uh, he was probably 11 years old. We had him last year against Fort Baptist, or uh, First Baptist, should I say. And I'm going to tell you something. This is a kid who can will his team to win. Last year through for nearly 1,850 yards, 17 touchdowns. He can also run it. He had seven rushing touchdowns. Look for Kelly to have a good game tonight. Dan Porter, Gal pick up win number one in opening week of high school football down here in the low country for the Cyclones against the 1-0 Hammond team. It's Keating Roofing Friday Night Rivals, and it's driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Dylan Richardson is ready to get going here for the Skyhawks. They will kick off to begin Keating Roofing Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Porter Gowd won the toss. They will receive, and we are glad you are with us as the Cyclones will have the opening possession here from Porter Gowd. We should mention game time and temperature brought to you by Roper St. Francis Hospital where experience matters. It is 91 degrees. It is sweltering. It probably feels a good bit warmer than that down there on field level. 
Game time temp brought to you by Roper St. Francis Hospital, where experience matters. So this Porter Gow team, second year now under the direction of Brad Bowles. He most recently came down from Providence in North Carolina, but has plenty of experience here in the low country. And number seven, his quarterback, Matt Kelly, is now a senior, one of four captains. And you can expect him to pitch it around quite a bit. That may have been a busted play there. On the first snap from scrimmage, it's Cannon Dorsey, number four, who gets a hand in there. Yeah, and I think the advantage uh, that Hammond has right off the rip is they've got a game under their belt. They've got a game of mistakes done. And the first mistake right here, miscommunication in the backfield. This is a Hammond team that lost a lot from last year. Of course, they lost Jordan Birch, Alex Huntley to South Carolina. It's a group that's won three consecutive Skiza 3A state championships. But not the same looking group, although it is the same guy registering the tackle, Cannon Dorsey there on the back of Walker Carswell. And it'll bring, uh, bring up third down. Carswell gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe picks up a yard, call it third and nine. Talked about Matt Kelly and his statistics early on in this game, but boy, you take a look at last year's roster and last year's statistics, and uh, he is really the only guy coming back for this Porter Gad team. They do have some veterans up front, a couple of seniors and a junior on the offensive line. A couple of juniors. This one through the hands of Kelly now, scampering back to the 15 and trying to make something happen as he gets away from Sewell, loses the football, and here come the Cyclones out across midfield. It's not how they drew it up, but Walker Carswell has the first first down of the game. First downs presented by West Shore Homes. Convert your bathtub into a modern and spacious walk-in, a walk-in shower in just one day. WestShoreHome.com. Kelly, you're gonna see him, he is a gritty quarterback. Let's say he picks up 15, and then Carswell is going to pick up another 10 on the play for about a 30-yard pickup. <laughs> Look, it's been a while since Porter Gowd's beaten Hammond. So you're going to take the positive gains that you can take. Absolutely. A little bit more conventional here for Carswell. Nice hole opened up over the right side. Jones James, the right guard, cleared the way. And Carswell picks up eight down close to the 40. You know, last year or two years ago when we carried this game on Friday Night Rivals. It was Hammond and Porter Gow. And the one thing I'm going to miss, not being out on the field as we are broadcasting from our studio here in Mount Pleasant, is you really don't get to see just how big some of these guys are when they come off the bus, right? Yep. Last year they had Huntley, or two years ago they had Huntley and Birch, and it was amazing. <laughs> you passed the eye test, right? Absolutely. Carswell waits for this one to develop, gets slung down as he picks up the first down. Grabbed by Jack McCall, a 5'9 junior, 165-pounder. But what you can see, you know, we're not there, but you can see 82 walking across. James Kitchens, defensive end, is 6'4. Cannon Dorsey, who's got a couple of tackles, he's 6'3, 185. And that's the defense that this offense of Porter Goud is lining up against. Keep an eye on number one, Lawson Pritchett. He was an Under Armour All-American as a freshman last year in lacrosse. There he is at the bottom of your screen. They didn't give him the first down, and now miscommunication. Cannon Dorsey, like a wrestler, throwing down the ball carrier. This time it was Eric Fenno, and it is fourth down. I think Matt had the option whether to hand it off or keep it himself, but look how fast number four, Cannon Dorsey, penetrates the line. And I don't think, even if Kelly keeps it, they get much better than that. Just remembering a couple of years ago when we had that game that you referenced. One of the big issues for the Cyclones in that game was simply the line of scrimmage. The size and speed and strength of Hammond was a big difference maker. This punt will go out of bounds. Where will we mark this? All right, at the 17. Decent punt. Corners the Skyhawks inside of the 20-yard line for their first possession of the game. Skyhawks... Picked up a victory last week. They played Ben Lippin, won it 35-7. to They won 10 straight games last year in order to win their third straight region championship and outscored Skiza opponents last year by a startling 53-6 to average throughout the year. So what does this Skyhawks team have? Jack Weston is the quarterback. 
replacing Will Muschamp's son, whose other son is now the backup quarterback. Jack Weston, a quarterback for the Skyhawks. And C.J. Stokes is the man who will be featured in this offense, and he puts a punishing blow there on Lawson Pritchett, who came up to make the play. Well, you can just see just from his first carry, his vision and his ability to move laterally was so quick, just right out of the backfield, was able to pick up that hole, picked up three yards. Stokes listed as a three-star. And according to him on his Twitter page, and backed up by Eric Kimry, his head coach, he runs a legit 4-4-40. Now in the backfield, Walker Carswell. Yeah, notice some of these names? Same guy who was carrying the ball a bunch on the offensive side. You'll see some of the Cyclones going both ways. And Carswell brings up a long third down. Carswell with 59 tackles last year. He's in the spur position. Loss of five. And a mental mistake, the front on the line of scrimmage by Porter Gowd. But going back to when we saw this team two years ago, they had Alex Huntley, and he was a junior. Jordan Birch was a junior. Jackson Muschamp was a junior. Um, and it was from the get-go, from the first snap. Uh, there was such a, I mean, you, you knew right away that you had two five-stars and a three-star. Um, and I, we were talking about this earlier. Huntley didn't even play in that game. No. And Birch played a whole lot of running back. Yeah, we just wasn't. This wasn't. Fair. <laughs> it wasn't fair. <laughs> Here's Stokes, who has to wait on that pitch and gets tripped up as he stumbles his way out to the 26, and that'll be a pickup of just about five. Not good enough for the first down. Porter Gow doing a nice job reading the option, holding their gaps and holding their positions. Looks like they're going to go for it. Yep, bringing in some beef and James Kitchens, who predominantly will be on the defensive line. But just like Porter Gout, Hammond will run a couple guys both ways. Kitchens is in as a blocker there, and whistles blow it dead. Flag down, let's see what it is. Here's another difference from actually being there. You can't smell the popcorn and the hot dogs and burgers cooking. Yeah, that's an issue. I mean, that that's one of the things that you just love, especially a Porter Gout. It just like wafts its way around yes, it the stadium. Yes, it does. But the whistle blows, and, and I was wondering there if Kimmery hadn't taken a timeout. Mm -hmm. and those offsides forces him to pull out his special teams and to punt. So a three and out for both sides here as Weston's tumbling punt. Pritchett lets it roll, and it will be marked out at the 41-yard line. So compared to two years ago when Hammond was down here, this yeah, is a right? markedly better start for the Cyclones of Porter Gow. About halfway through the opening quarter here, Keating Roofing Friday Night Rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet.
Keating Roofing Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet, and it's time for our Cruz Chevrolet keys to the game. Both teams having one possession in the books. For that, Dean Stevens. Well, I think even in that first possession by Hammond, I think they've got to have a balancing act. They're going to keep feeding that ball to Stokes. Sooner or later, they're going to have to open up the passing game a little bit. For Porter Gow, they've got to make this a four-quarter football game. Nice cut downfield and nearly at midfield, a pickup of eight for Gus Debnam. Gus Debnam's first carry of the game. Ball started at the 47, second down and five. Carswell getting a breather after playing four snaps on the defensive side of the ball. And four on the offensive side. Absolutely. Probably was in there on special teams, too. This will be a delay of game. Ball start on the offense will cost us five yards. We'll back it up and replay second down. So they lose that plus eight on first down. With the uh, false start penalty. Again, we'll keep a track of these penalties. Again, miscommunication in the backfield already. Weston nearly picked off. Never really looked comfortable back there, dancing around a bit. And that ball right in and out of the hands of Brig Brandon, who had an interception last week. Looked like Drew Friedman turned in, and Matt was expecting him to kind of turn out a little bit. You'll notice the fans, because of COVID, Skiza has put a 1,000-person limit. Hammond typically travels pretty well. Here's Matt Kelly with the pocket breaking down. That one is good for a first down. Dylan Richardson lays the wood, but the completion to the captain, Kyle Lafayette, is the second first down of this first quarter for Porter Gal, presented by West Shore Homes. Last year they had Tobias Lafayette. He graduates. Kyle Lafayette. I'm drinking champagne. He's a gutty little guy. <laughs> Makes a nice play. Takes the hit from Richardson. That guy doesn't hit like a kicker, Dylan Richardson. Yeah, he doesn't look like a kicker either. Listed at 180 pounds for the sophomore. This one looks like a design run. Weston. Slips his way through the second line of defense and gets down to the 24. Matt Kelly. Yeah, Kelly. I called him Weston. But it is Kelly who picks up nearly 20 yards. There it is. The fake to Lafayette. He cuts it back. It's a couple nice downfield blocks. I talked to somebody with Porter Gout today. They were let in just family and close friends and that was it Kelly that one on the move just a little bit short you go back and look tape he's gonna want that throw back he had Kelly him sitting on the open field, field on the flat but I'll tell you I think that was a huge third down conversion obviously for the first down but you just don't want to go three and out right you want to keep your defense off the field as much as you can Hammond's big up front on both sides of the line of scrimmage Brad Bowles directed this team to a 5-6 and six record last year. Isn't your typical second year now with the COVID circumstances surrounding it, but his team is off to a good start. Drew Friedman's first reception of the game. Gets him down to about the 13. I believe that's good enough for a first down. Yeah, what a difference. And just a play. And just a play. Right there, Matt able to step into that throw. Puts it right on the money. Two yards to go. We'll say third down. So just a hair behind the sticks. Carswell back in behind Kelly. And it'll be straight up the middle. It's actually Debnam. And it's a first down to the seven. So Debnam's been in for this second possession here for Porter Goud, which has now featured three first downs. And if memory serves me correct, Dean, tell me. I don't think they had a first down in the first half in that last home game against Hammond that we were at. 
Probably not. I'm pretty sure that was one of the stats we threw probably, out there. Probably not. Listen, we'll talk about this later in the game, but I mean, Hammond is, I mean, they have absolutely ruled 3A and Skeeza. Angles are tough with the sticks on this side. Kelly looking more patient this time. Gets away from Dorsey and got it complete, but was he inbounds? Still no ruling. They got the catch. And but no signal. You know, this is the other downside. And it's funny, I talked to Deb Antonelli so today because you know, she's doing her WNBA do games week? from, you know, her room over the garage. As we take a look at the replay, is that you're limited in what you can see. I think he's in. I think he's in That's as well. A touchdown. There was a flag down. It was illegal procedure, so even had they marked him in, it wouldn't have mattered. Right, so it's hard for us to not, like, we can't see if there's a flag down, yeah. right? We can't see if they're, the officials are off huddling over by the sidelines. Ball spotted right at the 13 yard line. Maybe the 12. But great throw, great patience, great catch to get that foot down. Now Kelly fires over the middle. Ow. This one's dropped. He put it right into the breadbasket of Lafayette this time. And it brings up second down. Passenger for Kyle Lafayette falls incomplete. But again, we never got a signal whether or not it was a catch and a touchdown. No, we just got the catch signal. <laughs> right. So we can't say a penalty flag eliminated <laughs> a touchdown. But we'll go ahead and say it anyway. Second and goal. You know, we do have a benefit. At least Dean and I are in the same room. We are separated by plexiglass. We are. Kelly now forced to dance the wrong way by about 15 yards and is slung down by Campbell Wall. Yeah, there, now I saw that flag. Campbell Wall got in Kelly's mug, talked a little smack, and will that be an automatic first down? It's a big mistake. I mean, you're looking at third down and a mile and out of field goal range. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be a first down. It's not a first down. It's a down. third down. I'm that, a little rusty on my penalties in a pandemic. Yeah, I was hesitant on that one to, to affirm that because in high school, some of the typical penalties that result in a guaranteed first down don't necessarily happen, this being one of them. So it's third and goal instead of third and goal from the, what, about the 30 or the 35? They've mm -hmm. got it at the 15. Hammond brings four. It opens up a scene for Kelly, who lost one. A touchdown to Fenno. Porter Gout is on the board first with 3.07 to play in the opening quarter as Kelly connects with the senior Fenno. A 6-0 lead for the Cyclones. How about that? He's got some late pressure coming in. He steps up, throws it away from his body. And a nice job by Fenner to reel it in with his hands. Keeps it away from his body. And I would venture to guess this is the first time that Hammond has trailed in a first quarter in a long time. They won 10 consecutive games last year after getting off to a slow start. They started one and two, then won 10 straight. They played a couple out of, That's I think right. they were out of state games, weren't they? Yep, I bet you they haven't trailed a Skiza team in the first quarter in a long time. Yeah. Great play by Kelly. Let's crunch some numbers, shall we? Yes, brought to you by Anderson Brothers Bank. Eric Kimry, the Hammond head coach, remember him? from his days the USC quarterback, the big fade pass against Mississippi State, which was almost 20 years ago to the day. 16 years, 183 and 18. <laughs> 11 state championships. Not a typo. It's early in the year. Jordy still a little rough on the uh, graphics and typing in. No typo here. That's 183 and 18. That's domination. There were some rumors circulating that Kimry may 
be on his way to the college that resides in Columbia as an assistant coach. That never matriculated, never even reached probably enough of a status of a rumor to even be mentioned here, yet it was. Well, but he has been the dominant force. And I brought this up at the beginning. It's worth mentioning again. Hammond averaged 6.1 points allowed per game against Skiza opponents last year. Mm. And they're going to start here on the 25. Oh, that's another one of those high school rules we should brush up on the 20. So they've given Porter Goud a 7-0 lead here. You've got to believe with especially all the openings, especially where we at down here, but some of the bigger schools, right, who may be able to pay the money to have Eric Kimry go to a 5A school. Mm -hmm. that, oper that phone had to ring more than once for him. You'd think. But he's got quite the pipeline being there in Columbia. See big 72 clearing the way here for C.J. Stokes. That big 72 goes by the name of Drew Bobo, as in the son of the offensive coordinator for the Gamecocks. He is 6'5", 280, and he's a junior. Yeah, I was looking at the roster, and you don't see Bobos. Not a whole lot of Bobos around town, right? <laughs> no, not many. Mike was at Georgia, played there. Head coach at Colorado State. Another one for Stokes here, just lowers the shoulder. We got a flag in. So we'll check on this as Walker Carswell registers the stop. Flag down. And now it's found a home back with Will Muschamp, the offensive coordinator, USC. Penalties hurting Hammond here significantly more than they're hurting Porter Goud. Remember the unsportsmanlike? On the Cyclones' most recent drive, that gave him 15 yards, and a play or two later resulted in a touchdown. And now here it backs him up again. Yeah, you mentioned Mike Bobo. We had a nice conversation on our show today, the fastest-growing sports show in Charleston, in South Carolina, in fact, JB and Goldwater. You, you can find it on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, wherever you go. We were talking about Mike Bobo's offense. Now, multiple it might be. There are some encouraging signs out of Columbia right now. C.J. Stokes tripped up as he gets to the edge. That's Kyle Lafayette getting a shoulder into him. Takes it back to the 30-yard line. You, you had him call in? We were talking with uh, Michael Flint about it, who uh, played wide receiver for Carolina. Yep. We had uh, Will Muschamp on the show last week. He called And how in. was he? He was very good. He has a great relationship with JB, Jamie Bradford, the host of the show as well. And you could tell it when the two of them were talking that there's a mutual respect there. So that, that, was, that was strong. Pretty awesome. He's got to get his running backs healthy, though. That Ball pitch may ground. have been forward, and the whistle blew. There it is. It's a forward pitch, not a fumble. And it'll be third down and 16. It's an incomplete pass. Well, there... You, you talked about pipeline. And by the way, great job by number 23, uh, the defensive lineman to kind of hold his position and force that pitch. His first name is Ned. And I'm going to call his last name, I'm just going to call him Ned H. That'll work. Did you work on that pronunciation with uh, Coach Brad? Did not. Mm -hmm. But you know what, if I go back through my emails, I do think... Uh, See, that's another one of the, if you're not there, it's tough because right. pronunciations are one of the things that you get on site. Right. Able to walk the field before the game. Yep. Talk to the coaches, talk to the officials. Weston overshoots his intended target. Seth Kirby, 6'4", 240-pounder. And Hammond will be forced to punt. So the Skyhawks have yet to record a first down. They're trailing Porter Goud here with a minute and a half to go in the first quarter and are giving the Cyclones the ball back. You talked about pipeline. They, I mean, we talked about Huntley and Birch. They're both at USC. Um, Muschamp's son went to Georgia, originally committed to Georgia State, uh, and then took a walk-on status with the uh, University of Georgia. But... Bill Kimry, 
Eric's father is on this staff, mm -hmm. and he played baseball at USC. That one was nearly blocked by Lafayette. And then it is dropped, but out of bounds. No harm there for the Cyclones as Pritchett loses it at the 40. Keating Roofing is proud to present each participating home school a check for $500. The grant provides each school with extra funding to help make their school great. Over the past 10 seasons, Friday Night Rivals and our sponsors have donated over $100,000 to Low Country students and schools. Congratulations from ITV Charleston, ABC News 4, and Keating Roofing. Is this your 10th? This might be your 11th of Friday Night Rivals. Of course, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Yep. Just about the same starting position here for Porter Gout. They began last possession at the 41. It resulted eventually in a 15-yard touchdown strike to Eric Fenno. Offensive line doing a nice job early on in this game. Gonna pick up three, but again, they have controlled the clock. And they've controlled this game, and they have taken care of their opportunities. Converted a couple big third downs on their last possession. The fact that the size of the Skyhawks, which was on display the first couple of plays for the Cyclones, they were getting into the backfield. Yep. And now Porter Goud isn't seeing many negative plays at all. Got a timeout here for the Cyclones, the first of the opening half. Share with you yeah, Kitchens is 6'4", 230. Their nose guard 6'3", 280. And then Dorsey 6'3", 185. And Dorsey had three ferocious tackles on that opening drive. But they've been able to space them out here and create some room. Gus Debnam has been the back the last two possessions after Carswell handled that duty in the opening possession. You get the sense, though, that Brad Bowles thinks Carswell needs all of his energy on the defensive side if he can ride Debnam here a little bit. Yeah, Debnam just keeps on picking up four or five yards a pop. No reason not to keep him out there. Ah, our old home yep. away from home. That's where we would be. You know, it looks significantly less crowded than it is typically when we're there. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, our... our crew here at the station, our engineer led by Justin Strauber, just being able to pull this off um, and for us to, to to do it from back here uh, in the studio has been uh, just yeoman's work. It's impressive. Uh, General Manager Mary Margaret Nelms pointed out on our Zoom call this week, I think our footprint at the stadium went from 30 people the last few years to six right. this year. We have six people on site and we're bringing you a <laughs> good football game on TV. Absolutely. Trust me, that's not easy to do. Second down and seven. Second down and seven. Kelly, under pressure here, just has to get rid of it and does. does. Is it and complete? Pass hold in by Harry Gaddy, but marked out of bounds. He's out of bounds. Third down and seven. I tell you, and Once again, if you're watching I gushed over this kid last year during the first Baptist really game, do. but he's got moxie. He's got great awareness on the field. Ball actually hit the ground. Um, the state out of trouble, except for that one sack. And, uh, and plays bigger than he looks. And he's calmed down as well. That's a nice block there by Debnam to keep him alive in the backfield. And this one will float out of the reach of anybody. Yep. Certainly yeah. threw that one away, and it brings and up fourth down. Don't take the sack. Keep your field position. Give your punter a chance to get it within the 20. You know, I was mentioning that at least we're in the same room here. If you've seen any of the Major League Baseball telecasts, specifically on one network with Joe Buck and John Smoltz, there have been numerous times already that they're not even in the same state right. calling a game. Correct. Buck will be, at one point he was in Denver, I know. Smoltz was at the MLB Network Studios in Secaucus, mm -hmm. New Jersey. And the game was being produced from a third state. Well, I think the pandemic has forced everybody to figure out how to do things differently. And if you're not willing to adjust, you're going to get left behind. Doesn't matter what the business is. Nice grab there on the snap that nearly sailed over the head of David Ball. 
And it'll tumble down inside the red zone and wobble its way all the way to the 15. Heck of a punt. It's about a 40 yard kick right there, all punt. told. And this Cyclones defense in two trips on the field thus far has yet to give up a first down to the three time reigning Skis of 3A state champs, led by Eric Kimry there on your right. And his quarterback this year, Jack Weston, who patiently waited for the last two years for Jackson Muschamp to finish out his four-year career. Had a whale, had a great game last week against yep. Ben Lippin. Passing-wise, he was 8 of 13 for 74 yards, but he also tucked it 10 times for 122 yards on the ground and a touchdown. But Stokes was the guy, and you can see why. He's really one missed tackle away from breaking it on every given play. That's easily the sense that you get. Spivey Woodward drags him down by his waist. That's about a five-yard gain there for Stokes. You can see the Cyclones playing their gaps so well. And that'll be our last play of the first quarter with your Cyclones. Leading the Skyhawks, seven nothing. All right. Cyclones with a touchdown lead through 12 minutes. It was a strike from Matt Kelly to Eric Fenno of 15 yards. And the Cyclones looking to snap a long losing streak to the Skyhawks. Up on them here through a quarter. Our thanks to Keating Roofing for the interview as we get you back here to Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet and presented by Keating Roofing for our second quarter of action. Porter Goud second leading it 7 0. Hammond has yet to pick up a single first down. They have been beset by penalties. They get in for delay a game? And nope. Coachman on the defense will cost the Cyclones five. That's just enough to move the stick. So it'll be, yep. Yeah. First down. So first down with that penalty is the first of the game for the Skyhawks. Porter Gal with four penalties now. But again, I think that's where the advantage to Hammond of getting that first game out of the way. Weston taking a shot here. That's a nicely thrown deep ball, but it hangs up and Lafayette knocks it away. Cam Scott, the intended target. Coach Bowles right there on with him. Watch him. He is stride for stride, and he is inside his pocket. And then just bats it away. That was clean and pure and a big play on first down. Lafayette's playing both ways. He had a touchdown taken away from him a couple of possessions ago when it looked like he did get his foot down, and then there was a penalty anyway. He looks like quite the athlete that Porter Gout has. Mm -hmm. Senior number 10 there at the bottom of your screen. Blitz coming inside. C.J. Scott reads it, cuts back the other way, and is knocked down by Jacer Amer, number 53, a sophomore on the inside of that defensive line. And it brings up third and eight. 
have not found a lot of success running between the tackles. If you watch some of the Ben Lippin highlights, they did a nice job of getting Stokes outside of the tackles. And once he gets in the open field, that's where he's the most dangerous. We're going to get another encroachment. It's a tough one for Porter Gow. That takes third and eight down to third and three. You know, it's a benefit for Hammond that they do have that one game under their belt. But aside from these two encroachment penalties to start the quarter here for Porter Gowd, it looks like the Cyclones are the ones that have one game under their belt. It'll be C.J. Stokes. Stokes will have enough for the first down. Then he breaks free. There's the open he field. He darts to the outside. He's got Lawson Pritchett to beat and will do so easily. A 68-yard touchdown run for C.J. Stokes. And the Skyhawks are within a point. They weren't able to contain him and keep him inside. And I think the more we watch this kid tonight, the more we're going to say, look at the cut inside and the nice stiff arm. At some point in time, we're going to say, just a three-star. Yeah. Just a three-star. And that's what you've been able to see it through a quarter and a couple of minutes here. His break free, his, his ability to then separate, plus the power that's within that frame. If he's not down there at the point of contact, that 4-4 speed will be on display. Because they've got him at 5'11", 190. Officially, yes. And he's only a junior. So I've got that as a 68-yard touchdown run for C.J. Stokes. We'll do our best to verify that. Nonetheless, it was really long, and it ties the game a minute into the second quarter here with the Skyhawks and the Cyclones. Anderson Brothers Bank ready to crunch some numbers again, and we may as well talk a little bit more about C.J. Stokes. Fourth touchdown of the year here. Yeah, it's pretty good in two games. <laughs> so, averaging about what, seven yards to carry, and then to this one, held pretty well. We take a look early on. He picked up three, picked up ten on that first drive. And then the last drive, he picked up three. And then all of a sudden, Tech on 68, and he's pushing 100 yards already. It's amazing how those numbers jump up when you run 70 on one carry. Yeah. And pretty quick as well. Apparently, it was that 4-4 was one of those laser-timed 4-4. So it can't be fudged at all. And you got to believe, if you're a Gamecock fan watching this, the fact that you got Birch from Hammond, you got Huntley from Hammond, yep. you've got Mike Bobo and Will Muschamp's sons playing for Hammond. You've got a couple other kids, DB also for the Gamecocks. I think there's four players on their current roster that went to Hammond. I mean, that's remarkable for a Skiza team to be putting out SEC talent year in and year out. Well, you look at, uh, you know, the, the private programs have that ability. Um, you look at Porter Gow's basketball team, for instance. Yeah. Um, so good. And they can just and load up. And when you got like Eric Kimmery and former Gamecock offensive lineman, Garrett Anderson was just hired on the staff a month or so ago. He played three years for the Gamecocks. So you've got experience. I've never seen that little move, by the way. It's the second time they did it. They did it before the game, before we went to air. Yep. Um, it's kind of like if you're throwing your dog the ball. It's like a little fake, right? Yeah, if I did that to my dog, he'd bite my hand off. Like, dude, <laughs> you're going to give me that ball, dude. <laughs> Line drive kick taken head high there by Carswell, and he's out to the 21, so he made a good decision. And taking that kick. About a, what, 18-yard or so return. 
And he clears the 20 yard line for the Cyclones who are now tied at seven apiece with Hammond. Dean Stevens, Darren Goldwater, we are glad you are with us for Keating Roofing Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. I'm glad that we are able to bring you this 10 game package all year long that culminates in the playoffs. Well, if you're a Porter God right now, you really want to be able to sustain a drive. Resulting in some points. This wow. One overthrown just a little bit. Yeah, that nearly yeah, went back the other way on Porter Gow. Pretty yeah. fortunate that Grant Croft didn't pick it off. Spivey game. Woodward almost there for the pick. I think if Lafayette doesn't tip it away, it's probably a, just a little pick six. Yeah, just quick, a little. A quick pick six. <laughs> just a little pick six. Couple of possessions ago, touchdown thrown by Kelly to Fenno, and this has been a pretty regular occurrence ever since the first possession that Debnam, the sophomore back, is handling the duties there instead of Walker Carswell, who started the game back there. I like the move for Brad Bowles, though. I mean, you got a guy like CJ Stokes running at you. You want Walker Carswell with all Fresh. of his energy on the defensive side. Yep. Going to move the pocket just a bit there for Kelly, and that's over the head of Pritchett. And a quick three and out for the Cyclones. So there's two incompletions. Both balls sail on him a little bit. So that possession all of 42 seconds. And really the first time that it feels as though Hammond has taken a little bit of momentum in this game. I'll let you know after the next possession. That will go a long way in figuring out whether I'm just blowing hot air or <laughs> there is something behind that. What, another heck of a punt. Yeah, Cam Scott lets it roll. Probably should have picked that thing up. He had Third straight state championship last year. Did that at Benedict College. Beat Ben Lippin to begin the year last week, 35-7. Weston, well protected just out of the reach. Thought it was C.J. Stokes, but it was not. It was his backup, Aiden Kanziter. Well, that kid just a sophomore. You got a good mixture. Oof. I like the way Weston throws. I mean, that wasn't exactly a deep ball. About 20 or 30 yards down the field, but nice release, nice smooth, comfortable looking motion. A little bit different from the power that you get from Stokes, man. Yeah, I think there was a, I was waiting for a flag to come out on, on Harrington. And then he had a little reaction after the play, but this is a kid I wanted to talk a little bit about, Mason Harrington, number 54. You'll see him coming out on this block. But he's 6'3", 255. He's got an offer from Methodist College, according to his Twitter handle. I mean, you gotta right, believe Twitter handle. Two-time All-State selection. On the edge and a lot of room here for Cam Scott. Breaks through the second wave of tacklers and has just Lafayette to beat. And he gets a little bit of help. Pushed out of bounds at around the 10-yard line. Well, you talk about the... Talk about Weston throwing the ball. It's a great toss, just laying it right out. And it is it's some great downfield blocking. Seth Kirby with the pancake. But here's the thing about Harrington that I loved about his profile. He also plays baseball. Where do you put 6'3", 255 on a baseball field at that level? First base. Catcher. 
<laughs> they are into the red zone. Uh, looks like they are discussing a possible flag as well. But for the moment, it's in the red zone. Brought to you by Miller Mott College. Take control of your future with skills to succeed at Miller Mott College. And they will remain in the red zone. There is no penalty on the play. That'll go down as a 54-yard catch and mostly run for Cam Scott, who had 50 yards receiving last week. See if the defense can stand up here. They fake it to Scott, so it's Weston who protects it with both hands and is taken down by a pair of Cyclones after a pickup of five. And the other question, too, is preparation and conditioning not being out. I don't know if they were out there the entire time going through their summer workouts. And I, I would venture to guess no, who has been. <laughs> uh, but when you get physical here. Here's Scott with a nice cutback. And another touchdown here for C.J. Scott. He showed you the speed on his last touchdown, and he shows you the agility here on his second touchdown. 13 unanswered now for the Skyhawks, who have the lead at Porter Gow. Well, nothing to the outside, and then watch the quick two steps, and he just plants a foot and goes. Really so, impressive. I pointed this out. The Gamecocks have some injuries in their running back room right now. Yeah. Marshawn Lloyd is out for the year with an ACL. Zaquandre White, something's going on with his leg. C.J. Stokes still has two years of high school eligibility, though. Extra point is no good. Didn't look like Richardson struck it cleanly. Six-point margin it is. That young man is accounted for 12 of the 13 Hammond points. They lead it on Keating Roofing Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. A couple of touchdown runs for the three-star junior running back for the Skyhawks, C.J. Stokes the third, And Hammond has 13 unanswered points here at Porter Goud. As the Skyhawks try and improve to 2-0 here on the young season. This is the opener for Porter Goud. With an offsides on a kicking team. Offside Haven't seen that in a while. Remember the last football game that you broadcast? It's funny, when you just said you haven't seen it in a while, my immediate thought was, I haven't seen football in a while. <laughs> so penalties or not, at least I'm watching guys running around hitting people. What was the last game you broadcast? The last game I broadcast was a Division II Conference Championship game actually played at Timmins Arena on the campus of Furman. Uh, Queens University in the South Atlantic Conference beat somebody and went 
yes, very, very good D2 basketball program and advanced to the NCAA tournament, which was subsequently canceled. And that was your last that was broadcast. The, that was the last broadcast, yes. It's been about six months. But the JB and Goldwater show is daily from noon to two. I heard that somewhere. <laughs> Here's Lafayette with a flag in behind him, which could very well negate the shiftiness and the return. There's another flag. flag. We may just do this all over again flag, for a third time. Everywhere. We had a game, didn't, where was, help me with this. Yeah. We did a game where there were like, wasn't there like four or five flags like? Every play? Yes. I, yeah. I want to say Ashley Ridge Maybe. Was, was the host school. Yes. Yeah. Ashley Ridge, great place to do a high school football game. It really is. Because you got to go back to the food, right? That's my first thought as soon as you say it. Because they've got the boiled peanuts. Man, oh, man. They're going to have a spread up there for the announcers. Yep. Let's see. we got a block in the back. we got a face mask. And they're offsetting, of course. We'll do it again. Yes, we will. We got a hold on the kicking team of face masks. Um, and then I think if you're going to keep ranking them, then Timberland's got to come in a close second. See, I've never made the trip to Timberland in however many years doing this package. Yeah. The Timberland game is always one of them where there's a college game that yeah. gets in the way. <laughs> well, they've got their fryers and their deep frying oh. fish and shrimp. Oh, you're just trying to make me hungry. Puppies. Oh. We have eight minutes to go in the half, man. We can't eat for a good two hours here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it again. Richardson doesn't look like a kicker, but man, does he have a leg. Carswell, very patiently, is not going to get out of the grasp. Uh, Brig Brannon there with a handful of jersey. I don't mind the patience if all of a sudden you ignite the Jets. Yeah. Um, I did hear today that through all the testing with Porter Gal, they no one tested positive, so high five to them. You know, we've seen in Major League Baseball what happens. You know, you're going to get to the last 25 games of the season. There's going to be some teams with 30 games left to play. We have no idea what college football is going to look like, even though the first week and a half has been good. And one team, Central Arkansas, has now played twice. Two, another, another two rounds of tests. Play. Yeah, they had two rounds of tests Central oh, Arkansas did oh, after God. their first game with no positives and then played again last night. All those signs bode well, and I was talking with Brad Bowles earlier today about, okay, it's year two, so when you have a coach in his second year, the obvious question is, and I think I've asked every coach in his second year, the first time I've had him. All right, so how much more comfortable are you year two than year one? He said, well, my two-year plan didn't include COVID. Right. So he said, it's better, and he's proud of his guys. There you go. There's a tough run there through the middle. Michael Brown's first carry. There is a flag down. But he said guys like Matt Kelly were real leaders. He said since June, they've really been going full go. They've been in the weight room. They've been on the field. Heard a similar thought process from Johnny Waters, the head coach at First Baptist last week. So a lot of credit has to go to Skiza. The Skiza ranks decided back in the summer, look, here's our plan, let's go, and haven't really wavered from it. Well, as with the success of most programs or business, it all comes down to leadership, right? What, mm -hmm. What's going on in the corner Legal office? And when it comes to, regardless of what sport it is, uh, and especially coming down to the high school level, so you know, for a lot of these guys, this will be their last run. Yep. And you play it by the rules, then you're gonna be able to most likely play out your final season. Six penalty for Porter Goud. Here's Kelly as Cannon Dorsey shakes off the block. I think he was held. And Dorsey then gets his hands on Kelly before he's dropped at the 20. Check on that flag. Had one rusher, one blocker.
So that's the seventh on Porter Gowdy. It was Hammond early on in the first quarter committing right. penalties and costly penalties. Wow. So here Jackson, the sophomore, gets flagged, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it was a little questionable. It looked good. He was questioning it. His hands went straight up in the air. And by doing that, maybe that drew the flag. You think? Draw the attention to yourself. Second and 26. Got to be careful here. Yeah, not where you want to be against this Hammond team, or really anybody. That's incomplete. Third down now coming up. That's Eric Fenno, who had the touchdown reception back in the first quarter that put the Cyclones on top 7-0. A lot of pressure on Kelly. Got rid of it quick to avoid the safety. What these penalties have done to the Cyclones is it it's eliminating their run game. Right. And that's where they found success early on. Yeah. Look how wide Cannon Dorsey gets here. Little jump pass to Debnam, who doesn't handle it. Probably best case it. scenario. Yeah, I think if he did bring it in, he could very well have had it jostled free by Brandon there. Yeah, the biggest problem other than third and 26 was last two plays. Incomplete passes, clock stops. Yeah, first quarter flew by. The second quarter has probably at least equaled the time of the first quarter, and we're not halfway through it. Cam Scott back. We saw the speed on the last possession by Hammond. Once they got him in the open field. David Ball didn't look very comfortable back there. It looked like he was hollering for something. A little side European punt here. He's had to work back there on some of these snaps. It's a short kick. Cam Scott shakes free a one tackle. He's got David Ball to beat, and he does. Got the corner on him. It's about a 30-yard punt return for a touchdown for Cam Scott. And just like that, Hammond has blown this thing open. 19 straight points. All of them coming here this quarter. Watch the big block coming right there by number 34. It's Connor Stevens, the senior. Springs him for his last 15 or 20 yards. But again, we saw Scott in that last possession. That took a little swing pass and Busted it for another 30 yards or so. Cam Scott, I think, forgot he had to be on the field for this extra point. So Hammond has taken a timeout prior to the extra point. It could go for two. Six and a half minutes left in the half. Yeah, I think the biggest thing we've seen probably after those first couple possessions, maybe even after that first quarter gout score, Hammond really has become more of the physical team on both sides of the ball. Yeah. I mean, the size is different. It is noticeable. Right. And the question from the outset was, you know, how long can Porter Gout really withstand taking the punishment on both sides of the ball that they are certainly about to and currently taking. Saw number three senior Mitchell Coleman with a passionate plea to guys on the defense as they were coming out for this two point conversion. Gonna leave the offense out there. It is Kanzater and CJ Stokes, but Weston wants to keep it himself and he's got an open man for the two point conversion. And they say no. No. As Lawson Pritchett coming up, the sophomore with the big hit on Seth Kirby, 6'4", 240. Okay, let's take another look at this. Well, see, the ball is in his right hand, so yes. did it actually cross the goal line? And the linesman says no. So a missed extra point and a missed two-point conversion. And will leave a couple right points there. out there. The white shirt. That's Eric's dad just walked out of the frame. Yeah, heck of a play by Lawson Pritchett. 
And that's the kind of effort they're going to need from everybody moving forward here. Yep. Right? Time to lay it all on the line, or this thing's going to get. You know, I mean, listen, they score a touchdown here, take some time off the clock. But they've got to be able to start take it to another level that they found early on in this game, first and second quarter. Got to find a way to stay balanced. Those penalties force Porter Gaug to become essentially one-dimensional in these last few possessions. Well, I think Coach Brad told you we're going to go as Matt takes us. Yep. And he is an excellent open field runner. And that would take care of two things. You're going to be able to pick up some yardage, and you're going to let that clock run. Because I don't think they can afford to allow Hammond to get this ball back. Hammond will get the ball to begin the third quarter. So running down the clock is absolutely a benefit to the Cyclones here. That is. Now, why isn't that an offside? Right, the guy. Yeah, it is. Thank you very much. <laughs> you just had to think about penalty it. penalty in the pandemic. <laughs> Remember that day in officiating school. Yeah. <laughs> right, he can't cross the line. Even the ball's not hit. We'll Kicked. Off of <laughs> kick. Oh man, look at that tee. Yeah, watch as he puts it down. He no, then... no, no, no. Have you ever seen a nice lime green see-through rubber tee? No, but then look, he just jams it down there into the turf every time too. What happened to the old orange three-prong tee? Equipment. It's like in golf. Yeah. The equipment advancements. It doesn't matter. That's probably yeah, why Richardson is hammering these line drive kicks back to the goal line. Oof, there's another one. This one will be taken at about the seven-yard line. Carswell again on the return. Here's Carswell. Again, that patience. It this almost will, looks as though it's there's no urgency to it, but the seam opens up and he hits it, and he's out to the 36-yard line. That's almost 30 yards on that return. Yeah, that one a bit more successful than the last two. And it gives the team a little bit of breathing room here. But I was going back looking at their stats from last year. Aside from Matt, Drew Friedman had one rush last year, no catches. Kyle Lafayette had 12 catches all year. Eric Fenno had four rushes. Carswell did not cover, carry the ball last year. Debnan did not cover the ball. There's another catch for Lafayette who gets a block on the edge, then dances free and picks up about three more yards after that move. And Richardson, the kicker slash safety, records the tackle. The only thing I'd like to see different I'd like Matt to step into that ball and get it to him quicker. That ball sat out there and just kind of floated. Get it into his arms quick. Let him make some moves in the open field. The longer that ball stays in the air, you got more defenders reacting, getting to the ball. Picked up about five and a half. Debnam takes it and had fooled Cannon Dorsey, who went chasing after Matt Kelly. It's a gain of about a yard and a half and third down. Looked like if he had, he wanted to take the ball to the left, he had a little open hole to the right if he just cut it back a little bit. That brings up a big third and four. Another thing you'll notice, the sticks are actually on the near side. Right. So you look for where I the first down marker is, and it's <laughs> virtually impossible to see it. But I can tell you that Debnam cleared it. That's a first down run there for Gus Debnam, and a needed first down for the Cyclones, brought to you by Limerick Heating and Air. Well, that's the kind of run you got to see. I mean, he took it, and he took off. You talk about running downfield. That's exactly what that was. And a huge first down for Porter Gowd. They took the ball. They've got the ball at the 624 mark. So worked off two minutes, almost to midfield now. Porter Gowd does have significantly like more first downs than Hammond does. Good. Kelly is going to tuck this, and he will get into the Skyhawks territory before he's out of bounds. Shattered out by Brig Brandon. Yep. Love it. 
mean, you're going to look at Matt Kelly, and you're not going to think a Tim Tebow kind of guy, right? Not real big, not real thick, but will stick his nose right in it. And I'll take that guy every single day on my team, right? And he'll give you the tearful, impassioned locker room speeches. Debnam. I like Debnam carrying through the line. I mean, he's always got two arms wrapped around it. Rick Brandon has another tackle registered there for the senior number 12. This is the type of drive that the Cyclones needed. Needed to take some time off the clock. More than two minutes gone thus far. ACDC playing some nice music down the sidelines. Yeah, they're in attendance playing it, huh? Yeah. Third down and four for the Cyclones. Cyclones need four. Kelly pressured there by Dorsey, but breaks free. Then Kelly reverses field, shows the hops. So we got a flag down, but oh, let me tell no you, this flag. is one of the Don't plays of the flag. year. <laughs> As Matt Kelly spins his way down, and we got to go back and check on this. That's my guy. That's what I've been telling you. Get him in the open field. He's going to surprise you. And now do you have anything left? Oof. That eighth flag, that's a killer. So every year we have these highlight packages at halftime. Yeah. Friday Night Rivals highlights around the country. Yes. And we regularly Im implore corporate to include some. This yeah. should be included. It may. I want to see that holding call again. It went right past us. It didn't look really egregious. I don't think so either. And I don't care that that didn't count. That should be one of the highlights. There you go. It's a highlight. Doesn't need to count. I'll tell you right now, I think this would be a good time for a timeout for Porter Gallup. Brad Bowles does not agree with you. No, he doesn't. And Kelly is going to, off his back foot, launch one into the hands of Dylan Richardson. Richardson, then mm. Kelly gets laid out with a block, is down inside the 10-yard line. Matt threw it off his back foot. We got a flag down. Throws it off his back foot. He's got pressure coming up the middle, off to the side. And you see the block coming up here. I think there's your flag. I agree. That was a blind hit. There, Jackson shaking up on the play. Up here. Up here. Trying to figure, figure out, I think, exactly where the penalty occurred. Yeah, that, they're going to take the defense's player foul. And that'll back him up, what, 15, 15. from the spot? Oh. That's Jack Sewell hitting Matt Kelly. As a quarterback, you know that you're a target after an interception and a free-for-all like that. But that one's going to sting Kelly a little bit. Go back to that holding call and that great scramble. And that was one of the reasons that I would have taken a timeout there. You've got a quarterback who's probably winded, right? You've got a big, big play coming up. And just let everybody kind of regain their composure here. Not sure if a timeout has been called. Our scorebook says that Porter Goud has taken that timeout, so we'll go with that. Opening game of Keating Roofing Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruise Chevrolet, or you've got a friend in the car business. Porter Goud scored first. Had a very good start to this game, in fact, against a team that has beaten Porter Goud 
for 13 times in a row. 13 in a row. Led it 7 0 with three minutes to go in the opening quarter on a touchdown strike from Kelly to Fenno. Second quarter has just been a different story. Porter Gout hasn't been able to find any rhythm offensively. Penalties have hurt them, and Hammond has taken advantage. They have also been able to get CJ Stokes off and running. A 68 yard touchdown run, a five yard touchdown run. Some of those numbers across the offensive line for Hammond. 6'3", 255, 6'4", 235. That's the left side. The right side, 6'5", 285, 10'2", 235. And that line's going to dominate most 5A schools. Let's see if Porter Gout can answer here. Carswell showing blitz. He comes with it. Weston pulls and tiptoes his way down to about the 44-yard line. William Jones with a nice job chasing that play down. It's a kind of effort and hustle that they need as the clock ticks down here with three minutes left. Second and three, Skylops. Here comes C.J. Stokes running downhill. C.J. Stokes on the carry, gets up to move the That'll be a first down Adam for first Stokes down. to the 32. Yeah, when you get a handoff four or five yards behind the line of scrimmage, and then you look up, and the offensive line has moved the defensive line back four or five yards, you've got some room to juice. And that's an advantage these Skyhawks will have over most of their opponents this year. Stokes untouched. Touchdown number three on the evening for C.J. Stokes. This one comes from 32 yards out. They're going to go back and look at this film over the weekend. And you're going to watch too many guys standing around watching. Nobody crashing to the ball. Slow start tonight for Stokes. That is a distant memory. He is over 100 yards now on the evening. In fact, two of his touchdown runs alone equal 100 yards. He went for 870 yards last year. He had 119 week one. He's got over 100 in week two before halftime. And here's Dylan Richardson. They've only converted one extra point or two-point conversion prior to that one tonight. So their time of possession on offense. All right, you got a crash on the ball right there. But their time of possession, their last touchdown, offensive touchdown, I think they held the ball for a minute, 35 seconds, roughly. That drive, about 42 seconds. That was a three-play touchdown drive. The touchdown prior to that was a punt return for a touchdown. Yes. There, there are not extended drives for Hammond. That's certainly not what's ballooning this lead, but the physicality, the size, the strength, that's where it's making a difference. Yep. It's hard enough to bring down C.J. Stokes if your defensive line is holding their ground. If they're not, and he's running right at you with a head of steam, good luck. Stokes with his second straight game with three touchdowns. 119 last week. Well over that tonight, I would think. Our statistician's still counting it up somewhere. We are taking applications for statistician intern. We do need that. You can do it from your home. You can. We can zoom you in. Whatever happened to Statman? Statman is working with ESPN. He's doing a nationally televised high school game tonight down in Florida. That's Wes Crow. Yeah. So he is now uh, rising up the ranks. He was the original. That's right. He was the original Statman here for Friday Night Rivals. And Nick Case points out he's Stat Dad now. Amelia, cute as could be. She's a couple years old now. There you go. Yeah. Stat boy growing up before our eyes. Absolutely. His first job in television, he was handing me cards. You Three. too. You too can start off handing Darren Goldwater cards. Yes. And finish up at ESPN. <laughs> Ball on the ground. Yes. 
eventually picked up here by Porter Gouts. They are able to save this possession, get it out to about the 15-yard line. One timeout, two and a half to go here in the opening half. I think that was Carswell again on the return. Two and a half to go. So that last drive before the holding call, they'd held the ball for about two and a half minutes, moved it about 30 yards. And then the interception. Kelly took a big shot at the end of that last possession if you missed it after the interception. But he's back out there handing it off to Debnam. And Mark Brown's there to wrap him up. Loss of a yard on the play. Second Brad down. Bowles was got a lot of roots here in the Low Country. Coached at St. John's for a couple of years. Won region titles in 2013 and 2014. Was at Goose Creek before that. Part of that huge run. Some of the best collection of high school football talent we've seen in some time. Kelly, look out. Hit by Brown, but stays on his feet He's again. Slippery, baby. Goodness. Kelly out to the 20. Matt Kelly showing his unique escapability again. So and then Brad was, at, as you said, Providence High School in Charlotte for four years. And this opportunity opened up, said he was too good to pass up. Look at Kelly. Legs moving. And I will tell you this, too. If all goes well, and we have a high school basketball season, you and I have to go watch him play basketball. Matt Kelly. Because he plays basketball the same way he runs a football. You know, Aaron Neesmith was uh, back in town, I guess. He just did a Zoom on ESPN from the gym at Porter Gap. Very nice. Step up. Got himself away from Dorsey. Delivers that ball perfectly on target to Lafayette. And that's good for a first down. Can't tell if he's hurt or just disappointed he lost his footing. You know what you can see down. right there? What's that? The Porter Gowd players are all wearing a newly designed face shield. Part of the uh, COVID, coronavirus, however you want to call it. But you can see it. It's, oh, around, the yes, sure. it's around the mouth area. Yeah. Uh, I know Oakley designed some. And colleges have all been given them. Not all are wearing them. And Hammond doesn't appear to be wearing them. But Porter Gowd is. To go deep. To Lafayette again. That's interesting. Good pickup. Yeah, Lafayette looks gassed at least. I think it or cramping. I think the last I think that last catch. It looks like the right side. I'll tell you the one thing I did notice. Being a former landscaper myself. Oh yeah. That grass looks thick. Look how deep their shoes drop. Mm. Again, Pritchett. Haven't talked about Lawson Pritchett much out of the defensive play on the two-point conversion. But yeah, notice that when they were walking in. It's a good shot of it right there. The white spikes deep down in. Doesn't seem to, yeah, turn Stokes into a 4-4 runner, into a 4-5 runner. Yeah, but it also slows you down as a defender. Wasn't it Notre Dame that used to I, think, I mean, all schools do to whatever ability. That one thrown directly at Brig Brannon, and Brannon will go untouched. A pick six here for Brig Brannon, his second interception now in as many weeks. 32 second quarter points for the Skyhawks. We'll go back and look at the replay and see what Matt Kelly didn't see. I don't know if that was intended for Debnam. He did not see Brig Brandon. Nope. And that's how quickly things can go against a team like Hammond. And we can talk about it now or later, but you know what they have done in Eric Kimry 16 years has been <laughs> nothing short of gold standard, and they are now in the Skiza ranks. Three state, three straight state championships clearly make you the gold standard. Yes. 
But I mean, you go 12 2, 13 0, 12 0, 8 2, 12 0, 13 0. 2013, something happened. They went 10 and 4. Sure. Oh, 12 dare 1, they. 13 and 0, 12 and 1, 12 and 1, 12 and 1, 13 0, 13 0. All right, they've got 17 total in their school, 11 under Kimry. That's state championships. A quick impromptu crunching the numbers here. 10 carries, 151 yards, and three touchdowns for C.J. Stokes. Yeah, that's solid. Decent. So 119 and three touchdowns last week. And in one half tonight, 150 and three touchdowns. Making an early case for player of the year. <laughs> Yep, dominated this level. Would probably dominate it all the way up to 5A, right? They would certainly be competitive, at least low country-wise, the 5A teams I'm more familiar with. You know, how would they stack up with a Fort Dorchester or a Somerville or a Goose Creek? I don't know. You know, the only difference... Numbers. Is this the numbers. Yeah, right. the depth. Yep. So Fort Dorchester can roll him in. There's Carswell. He's been a busy man. Sure has. Busiest guy out there because he's returning the kicks, and this is his best one of the day. It's got him three yards shy of midfield here with less than a minute to play and another flag. It's going to be a hold against Porter Gow. That I believe they're ninth. And that's just in a half of football. Player down on the opposite sidelines, maybe a cramp. I mean, it has been hot all week. It's Carswell. Really, we've gone through probably the hottest stretch weather wise the last week than we have all summer. Yeah. Welcome to the Low Country right. in the summer. Are we technically in fall yet? Has that happened, or is that this month? That's uh, later I this month, I believe. This month. Yeah, but I will tell you, some of the hottest moments first and ten ever experienced: Williams Bryce Stadium, a Saturday noon kickoff. Yeah, <laughs> watching the Gamecocks covering the Gamecocks. Yeah, if Brutal. you think it's hot in Charleston, <laughs> just head to Columbia. To yes. Gutman. Yeah, I don't know how they schedule noon kickoffs at williams Bryce, but my goodness. You know what they are doing? Will Muschamp is going to have the guys, one of their scrimmages will be at noon. They've been practicing. Well, they've, their scrimmages have been nighttime. They are going to have a scrimmage at noon because their second game is at Florida at noon. So Muschamp is going to have them out there on the field to get accustomed to it a little bit. There you go. One more snap for the half. And Kelly conservatively... Not trying to make any more mistakes, surrender any more points than the 33 that Hammond ran up here in this second quarter. And the first half will come to a close. Porter Goud led it early on. A very good first quarter. 7-0 they had the lead after a 15-yard touchdown pass from that young man, Kelly, to Fenno. But the second quarter, with very few offensive snaps to show for it for Hammond, has been dominated by the Skyhawks. Stokes with three rushing touchdowns, 150 total yards on the ground. A pick six in there as well. Keating Roofing, Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet, has hit the half. Stick with us here.
Roper St. Francis Hospital Halftime Report brought to you by Roper St. Francis Hospital, where experience matters. Each week, as has been the case for the last few years, we certainly do appreciate it. David Ayler Law Offices and Riders Law Group, proud to highlight a scholar athlete. From participating schools, the students selected have an opportunity to win a $5,000 scholarship at the end of the season. Eric Fenno has a touchdown today. He's also good off the field. He's got a 4.9 GPA. This is my favorite part of these. What you got? Looking at these GPAs and wondering oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. how in the world it's a 4.9. But congratulations to Eric Fenno. Uh, he is the lone David Ayler Law Office and Riders Law Group Scholar athlete this week. Typically, we'll have two per game. This is uh, this is a one-off, so that I guess increases his odds that five thousand dollars scholarship at the end of the season. Earlier, Scott Eisberg, the one and only sports director here at ABC News Four at My TV Charleston, was able to sit down with David Ailey. Here with David Ayler from the Ayler Law Firm, year four of the Scholar Athlete presented by you. $20,000, amazing, has already been given out, and that's not including basketball. How good does it make you feel year in, year out that we're getting to do this? You know, it's great. It's great to be here again. It's been a great investment every year. Uh, as you know, we've met some awesome athletes of, of, from all walks of life, uh, different sports, different uh, school activities, as well as outside school activities. And they've all gone on, of course, uh, to continue to succeed in their collegiate careers. So hoping for another one this year. How's life for you? Obviously, quarantine was an interesting time. How's your law firm doing? And, and how are uh, times treating you guys? You know, slowly but surely, we're getting back to normal. We got the office back open fully. And uh, we're doing everything we can to, of course, follow the CDC guidelines. At the same time, serve the people. Awesome. David Ayler from the Ayler Law Firm. We are talking scholar-athlete here on Friday Night Rivals. Appreciate that, David and Scott. Rubber St. Francis Hospital halftime continues here on Keating Roofing. Friday Night Rivals will hear from Eric Kimry, whose team has a 33-7 halftime lead when we get you back. Roper St. Francis Hospital hell, uh, Halftime Report. Let's do that again. Roper St. Francis Hospital Halftime Report. Brought to you by Roper St. Francis Hospital, where experience matters. Tonight's trophy is provided by All American Awards. And what a job they did. You're getting the Lombardi if you win Friday Night Rivals. For almost 30 years, All American Awards in Mount Pleasant has been your local trophy shop, providing both corporate and sports awards to meet your style and budget 
Visit Steve and his crew at All-American Awards when you recognize excellence. You can find them online, awardsguy.com. Porter Gout is doing senior night tonight, just to be certain that they recognize all of their seniors. It's Mia McLean. And Maggie McKay. Haley Prescott. I think it's cool that they're doing it week one. I agree. And you know what? Every other time we have senior night, we should do this as well. William Bickerstaff. It's a lot better than just showing them on the field. There's Walker Carswell, senior tonight, playing hard. Mitchell Coleman, the defensive lineman who wears number three. <laughs> Tyler Fennelly. Fennelly. Fenno's got a touchdown tonight, and he's the scholar athlete. So what happens is when you take, like, AP courses, college courses, you get your GPA is a little bit higher than just taking the standard old basket weaving class so I at only, Goldwater High School. I only, That's James Hill, by the way, and Churchill, William Hill, Jones. Churchill High School is where I went. Proud Bulldog. Uh-huh. I took some AP Here's classes. my guy, Matt Kelly. Yep. Looking sharp right there, Lafayette. I like I like Lafayette. Look at him sporting the College of Charleston thing up there. Nice. John Miles got the death stare, the WWE stare. Elliot Murphy. So I took those AP courses, but they didn't help me get credits in college. I By think the it, way, Charlie Thomas got a good grin. Uh, these and, pictures, and hair. These pictures are pandemic hair. And back to the start we go. Yeah, they're pandemic hair, but all the ladies look perfect. <laughs> and the guy's hair looks like mine. <laughs> Rover St. Francis Hospital halftime report continues after this. Next, please welcome number 28, James Hill. Who am I talking to? Okay. He's the son of Blake and Julie. Came to Porter Gout in sixth grade. Played three years of varsity football to go with two years of JV and two more of Bantam for a total of seven. Also, a member of the varsity soccer team and the varsity bowling team. In the first half? Oh, we just was we're just patient. We got a really young football team. We're um, replacing nine of eleven on defense, and our guys did a great job of adjusting. And then uh, offensively, you just gotta be patient. I think if you you know get the ball to CJ Stokes enough, uh, he'll Louis make something J. good happen. William Jones. <laughs> To who? <laughs> oh, I haven't had a guy like him. CJ's really dynamic. He's a wonderful young man, very intelligent, hard worker, and can absolutely fly. So his best football is ahead of him. He's still getting his legs underneath him, and, and he's going to have a great year. Thanks. Roper St. Francis Hospital Halftime Report is brought to you by Roper St. Francis Hospital, where experience matters. Next week, I want to see the Matt Kelly run that didn't count because it was called back with a flag. This week, we have the great moments from last week in Friday Night Rivals around the country. Somebody's playing football last week. Lots of them. Look at that drone shot. <laughs> okay, guys, we got to get a drone. Oh, the one-hander. Yeah, nice catch. Syracuse Farmington. That's going to be Farmington, right? Yeah. Salt Lake City. I was thinking that'd be New York. Yeah, Syracuse and no. Farmington. Very nice. Let's go fade route. In the Go Gold oh. Bowl. Rocking the gold pants. And a gold flag. Nice. The holding call. And he gets away. All right. Listen, if they don't well, call yeah. holding on that, <laughs> Columbus, Ohio. Are you kidding me? Matt Kelly's run was better got, than that escape. Keep it. Go to the pylon. 
All right. What was that? Touchdown run. Ho hum. Science Hill. You know who once coached there? Brad Bowles. He once coached there. He went to East Tennessee State. Oh, very nice. Uh huh. You know who else played there? Steve Spurrier. You know who else played there? Nope. Jamie Chadwell. <laughs> no, I was I was out. I gave you my two. Oh, over the shoulder. Wrong nice. shoulder. Still brings it in for Tempview. Tempview. Gets him back in the game, 31-21. Oh, high they need to get out of with a minute 22 left. High step it. Out route, tip. Oh, nice. your own tip drill. That's your the own second tip one. drill. I... Now, that was awesome. Is that a catch? It is now. <laughs> out of the backfield, one hand, left hand. And then he falls. Okay, that's fine. It's a cool drone shot. We have a drone. Do we have a drone? We do, but you know what? I mean, we're just, um, you know, we're playing it. We're just being cautious. All right, we got minimum we'll, minimum folks the game. Yeah, that's okay. We'll we'll build up from here. Yes. We spoke with Emmer Kimry just a moment ago. Okay. No, we just was we're just patient. We got a really young football team. We're um, replacing nine of eleven on defense, and our guys did a great job of adjusting. And then uh, offensively, you just gotta be patient. I think if you you know get the ball to CJ Stokes enough, uh, he'll make something good happen. William Jones. Give us a situation to To who? <laughs> oh, I haven't had a guy like him. CJ is really dynamic. He's a wonderful young man, very intelligent, hard worker, and can absolutely fly. So his best football is ahead of him. He's still getting his legs underneath him, and and he's gonna have a great year. Thanks. <laughs> when I threw the questions out, what I wanted, I wanted a comparison like when you were at USC, when you're a college guy, right? I want to know, who's this guy going to be like? I didn't write my early season questions very well. He will be unique. He will be CJ Stokes is who he will be. Marcus he, Lattimore. I wanted to say Marcus Lattimore. That's what I wanted him to say. He also might be the player of the game in a couple quarters. 33-7, getting set for the second half of Keating Roofing. Friday Night Rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Roper St. Francis Hospital Halftime Report. Time to hear from Brad Bowles, whose team had a 7-0 lead at one point in this game. 
acting. And I think we did that. They had a couple of good adjustments, and now we gotta try to make some adjustments to get back in this game. All good. Thanks, man. All right. Early on. So. He's just trying to make some adjustment to get back in this thing. Hammond will have the ball to begin the second half, leading 33-7, all of their points coming in the second quarter. The third quarter is what comes your way next. After the senior night ceremonies at the half at Porter Gout, both teams out getting stretched, getting loose, and getting ready for the third quarter of action. 33-7 is the lead for the Skyhawks, who have won the last three Region 3A Skiza State Championships. And we told you that it happened in the blink of an eye in the second quarter. In yes. real time, it was many, 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 many blinks of the eye. But each individual touchdown, very quick. A long touchdown run for Stokes, a short touchdown run for Stokes, a punt return touchdown, another Stokes touchdown, and a pick six. All 33 points for Hammond coming in the second quarter as we crunch those numbers with Anderson Brothers Bank. Listen, if you're a football coach, it doesn't matter what level, right? You want, you can get a score on special teams, if you can get a defensive touchdown, you get an offensive touchdown in the game, you're going to probably win a football game. When you get them all in one quarter of play, <laughs> you're probably going to win the football game. Yeah, you're going to have a really good quarter. You're probably going to win the football game. Don't forget Keating Roofing is proud to present each participating homeschool a check for $500. This grant provides each school with extra funding to help make their school great over the past 10 seasons, Friday Night Rivals and our sponsors have donated over $100,000 to Lowcountry students and schools. Congratulations from my TV Charleston, ABC News 4, and Keating Roofing. Going back to what Eric Kimry said about his defense, replacing nine of 11 guys. He has regularly and consistently, although he didn't do it in that interview, referred to his defense as a no-name defense because they don't have guys like Jordan Birch and Alex Huntley. Right. But they do have guys like Cannon Dorsey and James Kitchens on the defensive line and Brig Brandon, who has a pick six, and their kicker who plays safety, Dylan Richardson. Yeah. You guys are really good. Yes. But, I mean, you think about it. You talk about guys like Huntley and Birch, and if you're watching and you're not familiar with these two guys, right, these are two guys who are going to play. They're going to get substantial playing time in the SEC, right off the rip, <laughs> right, right off the rip. 
so you're replacing nine of 11, and you still bring back some pretty talented cats. We've had conversations about Jordan Birch on our show, JB and Goldwater, many times, actually, in the weeks leading up to the start. And the word out of Columbia on Jordan Birch is he is progressing well, still working on that footwork, though, the biggest test for a high school athlete to adjust to once they get up to college, the footwork aspect. There's Cam Scott, and he's got it out to midfield to start the third quarter for the Skyhawks. By the way, Cam Scott, also just a junior, and also really, really good. Yep. Jack Weston, number nine. He's in there last week, late in the game. His backup came in by the name of Whit Muschamp, and he threw a touchdown, and Eric Kimry afterwards joked, Sorry, freshmen can't talk to the media. That's the policy of another college nearby. Yep. <laughs> and also that of Whit Muschamp's father, his policy of that college nearby. That's awesome. But there's Cam Scott with a reception following the kick return. Tristan Godfrey close quick and a nice open field tackle. Look at Will Osborne there, 52, in yes. the huddle. He is. He's enjoying the he, uh, the music from the <laughs> very from much, out. very much. And when it first started, I was thinking to myself, why are they playing a piano? But I guess it's the intro to some song. <laughs> you are old. I'm hip. No, That's what they say. No, you are hop. <laughs> you're not hip. You are the hop. <laughs> so they open up, throwing the ball right off the rip. And they Pull continue to the throw body. the ball. Yep, right back to Cam Scott. This kid's a truck. Cam Scott Godfrey to bounces off things. of him on a kickoff Scott return. Same Scott. thing happened. So Hammond next year will lose two guys off the offensive line. Three others are juniors. Weston, Stokes, and Scott are all juniors. Hmm. You heard somebody on that <laughs> microphone sideline, where's the energy? You know, that's got to be part of the, the halftime conversation with Coach Brad. They're going to keep this thing in the air, huh? Dumping it off to Kanzader, and he gets to the outside and in. 39 unanswered now for the Skyhawks, who are rolling. The, they have interchangeable pieces because you look down, you see the two, and you're like, holy smokes, there goes C.J. Stokes again. You go, oh, no, that's just the sophomore running back, Aiden Kanziter. He's got the speed. The only thing he has different than C.J. Stokes, he just doesn't have the, the girth, the muscles on him yet. What, he's probably 16? As a sophomore, maybe 15? 15. 15. We've got a new kicker. And that is Aiden Pallison, the junior who looks a lot more like a kicker than Dylan Richardson and has the same result with the extra point. Yeah, he had the option to hand that ball off, pulled it back in, and then threw it out that little swing pass. Energy will be important for Porter Gout here because clearly they can't match up physically. Right. They are overmatched from that standpoint. So the only thing you've got left is, is the energy and the heart. Yep, and that's the conversation that probably happened in that locker room, right? We found out early on in this season, you know, where you stand up. You know, and it's, it's interesting because you look at the dominance of a Hammond football program. We saw it with Goose Creek for those three or four years. We saw it with Gork Dorchester those three or four years. And the ripple effect just with the Hammond program is that here probably in the next series, you're going to see a whole new offensive set, right? Yep. You're going to get all these young kids that experience. Same thing happened at the fort. Same thing happened with Goose Creek. You know, that's something that happens. We've talked about this a lot about Clemson. The fact that they are so dominant and have separated so far in the ACC that they are able to get guys the experience that other elite college programs 
can't because they're in games into the fourth quarter. Right, and they're playing. Yeah. Yeah, they've got they've got a couple young defensive linemen this year that are going to be a blast to watch. This guy Brian, I think it's Brees. Breezy. Breezy. Doesn't matter, man. The I've, s I've seen some video. This guy is unreal. Everything they're saying out of Clemson right now yeah. is it's like off the to the one comment tops the next about right. this kid. And oh yeah, there's another five star guy named Miles Murphy that nobody's talking about. Yep. If you're wondering, Clemson has the top five ACC freshman recruits on its campus. All five of them. Which comes as a surprise to absolutely nobody, probably. Porter Gow will lose a couple of yards here on its first play from scrimmage here in this third quarter. Got an and there's injury. an injury. And that's Carswell. Yeah, the uh, the Hammond player was motioning for the guy to come out. Yeah, that's never a good sign when the defensive player, I mean, that means he heard something and They'll check on Walker Carswell here. Yeah, I don't know if this is a – yeah, let's stay off that shot. I don't know if that's a um, if that's a hamstring or a, a cramp or something else going on, but that's a lot of pain for a cramp. We saw him in the second quarter have some cramping. Yeah, it looks like it from the shot we're seeing now. You know, the setup that we have here from our remote studio – courtesy the sales team giving us their conference room is that we basically have the same look uh, that the truck has, the production crew. So you've got two main pictures, the program and then the preview, and then we've got all the individual camera angles that we can look at. There you go. That's yeah. what we're looking at in That's here. That's what we're looking at. Well done, Nick Case. That was actually a live shot of our monitor in here. I mean, this is, I can't say enough good things about the job everybody involved in this production has done. Everybody outside of me and Dean, all we have to do is call the game and sit here. The folks responsible for getting this thing on the air and the way that we're doing it and in the quality in which it's being done. Absolutely. Very impressive. And we, we can take you down the... I guess inside baseball form of exactly how it's done, but that could bore you. But it's very impressive. Second and ten, a little sweep here. Here's Pritchett. Lawson Pritchett, a sophomore, was an Under Armour All-American in lacrosse last year. His dad played for Notre Dame, including one of the national championships under Lou Holtz. And his younger brother is also on the team. You, you gotta check on this flag, though. Pritchett start to get a little bit more action. With Carswell out, Debnam getting a lot of load in the first half. He's also a sophomore. They're going to back him up. Illegal shift on the Cyclones. So that's their tenth penalty. penalty. Second down. <laughs> and that penalty, I believe, was Pritchett. Hmm. I was reading an article today where Muschamp first noticed Alex Huntley on a lacrosse field. Really? Yep. That would be an imposing guy on a lacrosse field. Yeah. That Kelly just tries to force one out. I don't know if they'll get him on a... I don't know if a receiver was close by. Maybe 27. Michael Brown on the depth chart as a running back. But Hammond's defensive line now owning the trenches. And they're starting to go a little bit deeper. That was Jack McCall. They do have intentional grounding here. There you go. Loss of down as well comes with the intentional grounding. I mean, you can... You can sense the feeling of being deflated. Yes. On the Porter Gowd side here. Right. I mean, it wasn't long ago that 
we were sitting here. Wow, it's Porter Gowd's up 7 nothing. Last time we saw Hammond at Porter Gowd, it was a dominating effort, very similar to this one. It just started from the very beginning. Right. This time it took a quarter before it got going. There's Debnam again. They did a basketball nice, shot. Nice job early on in this game of running between the tackles. And then the snowball just started rolling downhill. I asked Brad Bowles if Pritchett, who Bowles says has, I mean, sky the limit on the football field, says he is as dedicated and focused as, as you can be. If the weight room's open, he's in it. If there's a chance to watch film, he's watching it. I said, yeah, but is he, is he lacrosse or is he football? Right. He said, well, you're going to have to ask him that one. Nearly blocked. But if you're an All-American as a freshman, that's, that says something. It says a lot yep. for a game that is growing rapidly. And there are scholarships available for lacrosse. Absolutely there are. I'll say this. I went to a private school for a little while growing up, and it is one of the nationally renowned lacrosse programs. I was a baseball guy, so I didn't get along with the lacrosse guys. But once I started calling lacrosse. Baseball snob. Yes. Oh, no, it was more the other way. It was more like I viewed the lacrosse guys that All way. All right, yeah, yeah. However, I was also however old I was. Once I started calling lacrosse, I have a brand new appreciation. It is one of my favorite games to call. It's fantastic. Really? Lacrosse is a great, great sport. Yes. Yes. True story. A little easier than hockey. I think hockey would be the toughest game to call. One of the few sports I have not called. But I would think hockey would be very hard, yes. Weston's still in the game. Stoke's still in the game. And so is Cam Scott. And they're no. still throwing the football. That wasn't Cam Scott. It looked like him. Sydney, Sydney Evering. Evering. You know why it looks like him? It's number one and number three. 5'10", 5'11", 180, 170. So, right. yeah, they, they look a lot alike. Yep. So I don't think in their first possession did not throw the ball or did not run the ball. And here, not running the ball. So an opportunity maybe just to get Weston some work throwing. It's a good point. But up 33. There they go on the ground. Looks like they're giving Stokes a breather because that is the, well, at least the second straight Kansiter was on the field for. Second straight play, and he had the touchdown on the previous drive for the Skyhawks as well. That is a West Shore Homes first down. You can convert your old bathtub into a modern and spacious walk-in shower in one day. WestShoreHome.com I'm not the guy to correct the play-by-play -play guy, the Hall of Famer that you are. Uh huh. But I would just say that I don't really believe that they're giving him a breather. Stokes. I think they're giving the rest of the day off. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to figure out, oh, man, what did I say? What am I getting corrected on? Pressure here. Look at Weston. A defender goes down. That pretty much opened up the edge there for Weston. Scramble by number nine, Jack Weston. Charlie Thomas making the hit. That's what you like to see. Cyclone down again. And that's clearly another cramp. Man, you can see I'm the muscle on Carswell man. there. Oy. I'm going to tell you something. We saw him go down early with a cramp. He goes down within the last seven minutes with the cramp. And he's right back on the field. I think the last one was the right calf. Now this is the left one. And once you start cramping up, good luck. I'll take him in the foxhole. Oh, yeah. Ideally without the cramps. Oh, my gosh. It hurts. Like Just looking at it, it You hurts. got another one down on the far side. And, th Dean, this goes back to what you were saying. A, the heat wave that we've had down here in Charleston, that it's been the hottest it's been all summer here these last few days. And, B, while they've been out practicing, certainly it's been different from previous years. However, they've right. been able to go about it, whatever restrictions are in place. Right. So uh, it's understandable. It's week one. I mean, bodies are still getting used to this. Right. Right. And I don't care how much you hydrate. Right, you're not gonna you're not gonna beat 110 heat index. Ugh. That's Lawson Pritchett. 
coming off. Just want to point out with three down cyclones, you see two Porter Guy up last minute, and Sonia from Hammond doing her job as well. Big hand for our ATCs from both schools. I'm telling you what, the play by play guy, and I apologize for not remembering his name right off the rip. Public address announcer. Yes. Correct. I believe Larry is his name. Golden Tones. Yes. Right? A voice made for radio. <laughs> I believe it's I believe it's Larry. Meanwhile, second and two Skyhawks. Ball at the 32. We go back to the run. Yeah, for a second I thought it actually was Stokes again. Kansiter it is. Gardner Watson, the closest to the trips, will give him the tackle. We'll have an opportunity to see another of the best Skiza teams in the area next week. We've got First Baptist, Johnny Waters. Yep. Hurricanes have started to put some guys at elite college programs like South Florida, like Clemson. Yep. Will Daniels, their quarterback, will probably play at the next level. Had a big win last week, too, to start their year 1-0. and Had so a had a blast there last year. Yeah? Yeah. It was a great setup. Coach Waters is a good dude. Oh, this is Stokes. They the put way, him back in. Okay, you were right. <laughs> and they and still can't tackle him. There goes Stokes. Number He's four touched on by the a few. And tackled yes. by none. That one's a 32-yarder. Yeah, it'll be great to watch what happens to this guy as the year goes on. And again, they will most likely breeze through that skiza schedule. You know, and even, even two years ago, you know, First Baptist had Mikey, and they thought, you know, this could be the team that gives them a run. And I think it was 40, what was it, 40 to 7 in the oh. state championship game. Right, and that's when they had Huntley and Birch, yep. must champ. So it'll be interesting to see how they go, especially, I mean, you look at a team that replaces nine out of 11 on the defensive side of the ball, and you're thinking, they're going to struggle. But they've got some athletes over there. The no-name defense, as Eric Kimry calls them. Hammond will be down here again to play First Baptist. That'll be on October 9th when they make the trip over what's James Island in the new facility out there. That's beautiful. C.J. Scott now with over 180 yards and four touchdowns on the ground. Only a junior, so maybe you hear about a commitment after this year prior to next year, maybe. If not, certainly an offer. Offers have uh, got to start coming in soon. I would imagine he probably holds some already. multiple already. And his dad's apparently a good cook. If you go to Eric Kimry's Twitter page, uh, Kimry thanked Father Stokes for what looked like a rack of ribs. They nice. looked very tasty. Yeah. That's why you want that guy in your locker room in college. You want not, not only do you have a good football player and a teammate, you got a guy who could smoke up some ribs for you. Let's see if we take a look at his rival's page. Lafayette had a knee down when he picked that ball up. Whistle did not blow. So he's able to get out to the 23, and that's where the Cyclones will begin here, down by 40. So he has one offer, this is according to rivals now, okay. three star. He's got one offer, three total school interests. So his CJ's top interest, Gamecocks. Don't imagine that. The Gophers. Minnesota. And the Hokies. Wow. And those are his top three of interest? Those are his top interest. And who does he hold his offer from? Does it say? South Carolina. Oh, they're on him early. Yeah. You could very well be seeing a future Gamecock in this game. Now. Another one. <laughs> yes, maybe multiple future Gamecocks are in this game. Another one. 
That's a loaded running back room now. Marshawn Lloyd was one of the top freshman running backs in the country, or supposed to be this year, but he got hurt. Right, he blew out his knee. Yes, he did. Which was a shame because the, man, the reviews on him were starting really week one good. in the SEC as a freshman running back. Good. Yes. Uh, and how often does that happen? Not often. Did this ball come out? No, but he's down. He's another De cramp. Yeah, he's he's been working hard. He's been the primary back for Porter Goud. So now, I mean, now this is, <laughs> it's almost like a cold or something going circulating through the team, these cramps. So on June 22nd of last year, C.J. Stokes tweeted, after a great camp, I'm excited to announce that I've earned, all caps, a scholarship to the University of South Carolina. I like that word, earned. I like that, too. Because in reality, that's what it is. Now, some kids will say what's the pretty much the standard line on Twitter is, I've I'm blessed, blessed to receive. I've always said, I can't wait for somebody to say, I'm blessed to receive my first offer, and I've accepted. Yeah, You right. never that, see that. No. <laughs> Three days ago, C.J. Stokes, as Kelly throws it out a little short to Lafayette, Three days ago, Stokes tweets out one of those awesome pictures, whole getup. Okay. In North Carolina blue. All right. With MJ over his shoulder. <laughs> the image of MJ, should I, I say. I, that, was my, that was my next question. Is it yeah. actually MJ? No. Shockingly, the Jordan brand does outfit North Carolina athletics. I got to tell you, and listen, I bleed burnt orange, right? Yeah. But that North Carolina color and that uniform, like their baseball uniform, I think is the best baseball uniform in college baseball. Good looking, isn't it? Yes. So you must like the Citadel uniforms, too. Yes. They're, they're similar. <laughs> yes. Um. Tell you what, Another great, great punt tonight. Yep. MVP for Porter Gowd tonight. Yes. I mean, that's that's clear for David Ball. It's not exactly your hope going into a game that your punter is your MVP, but he's done well flipping the field a few times. Ooh, look at that shot. Beautiful move. So back in... It's like a Halloween shot. I'm starting to see Halloween. Oh my God. It's like... Halloween stores are popping up. How every store you can go in right now has Halloween stuff. Yes. That's that that's the moon you see. That, I mean that's Halloween. So you think about it. Stock Stokes is a 22 graduate. Right? So back in mid-August, Carolina gets a commit from a five-star quarterback out of Georgia, Gunner, Gunner Stockton. Stockton. Yep. So you're able to put together a backfield if Stokes ends up going there. And a three-star. And you know he's going to be more than a three-star next year. Oh, yeah. And Marshawn Lloyd and everybody else, because of COVID, NCAA has given everyone a, a fresh year of eligibility. Right. So this year doesn't count against anybody. Correct. So if you're talking Gamecocks running back room. Correct. Lloyd is redshirting, but he can still redshirt again because it doesn't matter. Right. Speaking of Gamecocks, their head coach, Will Muschamp, has his youngest son in the game at quarterback right now, Whit Muschamp. Two for two last week with a touchdown. And he'll give this off to Kanziter. Love to see. Is that number 30? James sure Ball was. putting his nose in in there. Nice tackle. Yeah, so Lloyd will have that extra medical year. Yep. 
Gamecock's schedule is brutal. Dude, everybody in the SEC. It's brutal. 10 games all in the conference. Brutal. Jamie, my uh, co-host on JB and Goldwater, daily 12 to 2, by the way. He Back points out that <laughs> Kansas is going to be playing somewhere one day soon, too. He's only a sophomore, though. Uh, I believe seven of the 11 toughest schedules in the country are SEC schedules. Charlie right. Thomas. I think I've got that right. The Gamecock schedule is it's brutal. Yep. But you know what? That's right. Weekdays, noon to 2. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, podcast form. After that, everywhere you find it, JB and Goldwater. It's really easy to search. You have that tattooed somewhere on you? I on your don't. forearm. You just look down on it. I've got stickers that I can give you to put on your car if you'd like. Yeah, we're a big sticker family. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> yeah. It's about the uh, hardest hit that Kansiter has taken. Yeah, Tristan Godfrey yeah. sticking his nose in there. Spivey Woodward may have been uh, may have been around that too. But you know what? Fine, it's a hard schedule. It's a schedule because for a, a long schedule. time I wasn't thinking we would get to this point. Yeah. And I'm a Big Ten grad. And they and have no schedule. We're not getting to this point. <laughs> and the Pac-12 has no schedule. No, but there is news out of the Pac-12. They have. Uh, partnered with a, I don't have the exact wording, but a new FDA-approved testing company that can give rapid daily tests for minimal cost. So they may be able to at least start basketball season sooner. Muschamp going to keep it on the ground. Take it across the 50. Muschamp on the quarterback keeper. Good-looking run there for Witt. So what are the odds Dad's watching right now? Did you ask him if he when was he was on JB and Gold H two O? Okay, you did. I, I had to pause there. I was like, wait a second. I don't know if you got Goldwater right, but you did. You got Gold then H two O. I didn't watch. I didn't ask him if he would be watching his son. But you got to think on he Friday is. Night Rivals. Well, I mean, maybe he and Mike Bobo are sitting there together watching. Bobo's son's the right tackle. Could be. Are they like splitting a tray of wings? Wouldn't you like to be doing that right about now? With some nachos on the side and a big old sweet tea, a little bit of a little splash of lemonade. It's about the second or third reference to food, and we're still not into the fourth quarter, so I'm still hungry. Jack McCall lowering his shoulder, picking up an extra four or five yards. Goes out to Jack McCall. See a lot of the second team guys for... Hammond coming in, trying to make their mark. And this is what you talked about before. When a team has the comfort of building huge leads early, then it just furthers their development. Because as they go through the season and take on injuries and then go into next years, you got guys who have experience. Right. And think about for Witt, who's just a freshman. Mm -hmm. He'll have one more year to sit behind Weston, who's a, C who's a junior. That's right. Atwood oh. hung up for a long time. Yep. And Amari Bennett paid the price from Lafayette. That's the heart you want to see when you're down 47-7. to seven. Step up and make a play. Put it on the line. Just Lafayette read it so well. Got off the block of McCall, too, to make that play. I like Lafayette. I really do. I've said it a few times throughout the game. Third down and five. Straight through the middle of first down for Kansiter, who then spins his way for an extra three. And he's down to the 35 and a first down for the Skyhawks on what will probably be the final play of the third quarter. That first down brought to you by West Shore Homes. They'll convert your bathtub into a modern and spacious walk-in shower in one day. It's possible, and they make it happen. WestShoreHome.com And that'll be the end of the third quarter. And that's the end of the third quarter with your score, Skyhawks 47. We'll hear from Cruz Chevrolet as we continue on. Third quarter in the books. 
Keating Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Nice night out on James Island. That's where Porter Gout is hosting Hammond tonight. They have 47 unanswered points, the Skyhawks do, after Porter Gout led it 7-0 through a quarter. Alongside Dean Stevens, the main anchor for ABC News 4. I'm Darren Goldwater. And I believe we've instituted the running clock. By the way, you know, this, the way we do this broadcast, the way everybody's been doing the broadcast. Well, that's not true. The way we're doing the broadcast, you can no longer say alongside. No, in front of. <laughs> Muschamp going to tuck it and run. Muschamp on the keeper. Yeah. Dean and I are in front of each other, facing each other with plexiglass in between us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have followed, and they have taken care of all the precautions here. It wasn't too long ago when a broadcast was done remotely that you could tell. It, it was obvious. Uh, this is not new to broadcast technology, but the manner and, and, I guess, quantity of which it's being used right now is significantly greater. And, right. and it's also much better because oftentimes you, you can't tell right now. Correct. Whit Muschamp stays in, and he hands this one off. That's Jack McCall. Doesn't want to go down, but he'll put the ball down. And it'll be Omari Bennett who falls on it inside the five. And that's the kind of night it's been for Hammond. McCall churning and just grinding out some extra yards. Fumbles it laterally, and his guy's right there. Like a little bowling ball. We always liked the uh, bowling ball running back in my house growing up as a kid. Jerome Bettis. No, I'm going to go, I'm going to, no. <laughs> Co if Coach Muschamp's watching, he's going to know, right? He's going to know. Norm Boulash. Boulash. Played for the Colts. It was a fullback. So as kids growing up, we played this game called Boulash. So you'd have two defenders at the bed and one guy carrying the ball across the bedroom. Oh. And you had to get to the bed. And I will tell you. Must champ's got a touchdown. First rushing of the year. Had a passing one last year or last week. That's right. Must champ gets into the I will tell you that we Him broke more bed frames playing boulash. And I'm telling you, it was up until we were teenagers. What broke more, bones or bed frames? Uh, bed frames, two. Uh, we a uh, window, couple yeah. window panes. That makes sense. And what was so awesome about Boulash is my brother, living in Houston, 
catches up with him at a celebrity golf tournament and played golf with Boulash. Oh, yeah? And he tell him about the game? Absolutely. And I bet he loved it. Yep. Got his autograph. He was on the cover of Sports Illustrated 100 years ago. Got that signed. That's pretty cool. So that's Jack McCall. He's our new Boulash. <laughs> our new Boulash. You've got a friend in the car business, our Cruise Chevrolet drive of the game. There have not been many long drives for the Cyclones. They have scored quickly when they have scored. And this is a pretty good indication of that. This is Cam Scott just throwing guys around. And it was paid off eventually with a touchdown run for C.J. Stokes. He has four of them today and over 180 yards on the ground. Your cruise Chevrolet drive of the game. I wonder if you're, when you're a college coach and you're Thomas Brown and you're recruiting a running back, right? Do you look for those? I mean, he made two quick cuts right there, right? He obviously has got awesome vision, right? Are you looking for that? Is that more important to you than speed or you want the combination? You want the combination, but then then you're getting to the difference between like SCC guys and group of five guys and group of five guys and FCS and D2. Like, so some of them are going to have the speed, but not the vision. Right. Some will have the great vision, but they run a five five. Right. But if you can get the package and I think it's pretty evident when you watch CJ Stokes run, he's got the package. Right. I think. When you have, only when you have get, that, you separate yourself. And he's only could, you know, you put on another 15 pounds of muscle on this kid, right? Which he's going to do just by growing up because that kid's just 16 years old probably. Yeah. Oh, Lafayette went down hard right there. Nice tackle. Brady Comer coming up with a nice block. Lafayette's been, he's been dealing with lower leg issues <laughs> from the get-go. But another guy who's just been grinding through it. Yeah, working hard. If you're noticing the clock running, that's not a mistake. There, There is a rule that once it is a 40-point difference, as long as the coaches agree to it, it yep, can be a, a running clock. It's a coaches agreement thing. Yep, absolutely. Kelly's still in. Whips it outside. I nah. think that you... You know, Matt Kelly would sit down and tell you that he's disappointed in his play today. Could have been better. But you saw flashes of how good this kid could be. Before before the physicality and the just sheer size of Hammond wore down Porter Goud and they were able to run the ball, they were able to be balanced and give a quarterback a prayer of having success, he did. He, right. looked, he looked comfortable. Right. But to be able to step into a throw, you saw him do that a couple of times tonight. But when you've got so much pressure coming at you, it's that back heel throw yep. that gets you in trouble. One of those back heel throws was picked off. It's been picked off twice. One of them was returned for a score. I think that he will, as the season goes on, there's interest in some small schools. But he will have an opportunity to play at the next level if he chooses to. That's right. And I preach this often to who? Anyone who will listen, <laughs> that it's not D1 or bust. Your congregation? Yes. To all the listeners of JB and Goldwater, because I know we were just all waiting for that one, but I really wasn't planning on that one. Uh, it's not D1 or bust. There are facilities at the Division II level and the Division III level that would that blow you, you. I've seen many of them. It bl they'll blow you away. In every sport, it's true. By the way, that first down brought to you by Limerick Heating and Air. And you were out west at one. You were out west. Where were you? Was it a baseball game? Point out Loma. West? You're thinking Point Loma, aren't yes. you? Yes. Yeah. Right. So Point Loma is just outside San Diego, and, and if is you, that a Division Two complex? It's, or Division Three. It's D two, and if you bomb one out to center, you're in the Pacific. Down a cliff and into the Pacific. <laughs> the cliff is steep enough that we couldn't put a camera out in center field. And if you watch a baseball game, that's pretty much the primary camera that's used. Yep. Well, we couldn't do that because we didn't want to lose a person or a camera. So that camera never made it, but Point Loma is spectacular. And there are ways to then still be successful. The Gamecocks have a kid who started his career at Wingate. And now Jalen Brown, assuming he gets cleared by the NCAA, is going to be a starting receiver for the Gamecocks this year. Yeah, that was Michael Brown on the run, by the way. 
Yeah, and guess who else is going to? My guy Raekwon still at Wingate. Yes. Right? He'll step in. That's right. And I always said. Fort Dorchester. I always said. Cyclone. Listen, I preach to a very small congregation. <laughs> right? My it's bigger than wrong, you know. But I'm going to tell you, and he goes back to Division One or bust. Um, and being the father of a, a Division One college baseball player, I will tell you this, that there are Division Two schools, baseball-wise, yes. that are fantastic. Yes. Right? But, and it happens yeah, early on. It happens early on. As a parent, it's called parental paranoia. Right? It's not a licensed diagnosis. Okay. You won't find it in any medical book. But it's called parental paranoia, and it's the fear of your child being left behind. Right? Yeah. And it's, so you're always chasing that thing. And as somebody told me one time, it was a great piece of advice. It was like, for, to be an effective and successful parent of an athlete, you've got to understand his limitations or her limitations. Okay. And to understand, truly, where is this kid going to fit in and play? I'll tell you who's fitting in well. Michael Brown is fitting in very well since he's been carrying the ball. Played really well. It's a first down right about to the red zone. Right. Everybody would love to play baseball at USC or at Clemson or at North Carolina. Right? So yeah. you've got you've to gotta be realistic enough to look at your child and say, where do I fit in? Right? And then the academic part of it. Because the percentage of guys who are going to go on and play in the NFL are small. <laughs> in from college, high school baseball to the pros, minuscule. Yes. Right? So, you know, you look at it, and this rarely gets talked about in the conversation with college sports and the opportunity to play, is you get an opportunity to get an education. And, and that's huge. Yeah. That's huge. All right, thank you for allowing me to go to church. Well, I or synagogue. I um, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciated it. It was one of the more interesting things you've said because I'm sitting here with a parent of a seven-year-old. I'm thinking, oh, okay, remember this conversation. We're in the Miller Mott College red zone, taking control of your future. Speaking of colleges, at Miller Mott College, I will tell you, I had one of the memorable stories. I was emceeing an event, and it was, you know. 30 minutes before the thing started, and a couple came up to me, and they said, hey, um, can we talk to you? This was a few years back. Can we ask you a question? I'm like, absolutely. What's going on? And they're like, you know, you, we know you have a son who plays high school baseball. He's going to play college baseball, yes. And he played basketball, yes. And, um, like, you know, we have a son, and he plays basketball and soccer, but everybody's telling us that he only needs to play one sport. Can you, no. can you tell us, right? Your thoughts. And I said, well, first of all, tell me this. How old is your son? And then they start laughing. And they say, he's six. Oh, my God. <laughs> I said, he's six? He's probably not playing enough sports. Right? Six. So, anyway, it's an awesome ride. And Coach Muschamp certainly understands it. Look, talk to college coaches. They're going to tell you. Many of them, regardless of sport, that they like recruiting athletes of multiple sports. Right. Nice All throw right, across Kelly. the middle. Oh. Knocked down. Great play by number seven there, right? Yes. Jason Roberts. Yes. But again, Matt Kelly, another example, playing basketball. And I'm going to tell you when the first time I, I, I met Matt Kelly and his family. First, we're going to get our Will Lou Gray stop of the game. Never stop learning. The Will you Lou Gray never stop learning stop of the game. Good job, guys. Yeah. Absolutely on point right there. That was a two-point conversion that I thought was converted, but was not because of Pritchett's hit right there on the tight end. We had Matt Kelly when he was probably, I don't know, 11 or 12? And he played on a travel basketball team with our second son, Charlie. Mm. And Charlie was probably the 12th man off the bench on this travel team. Charlie Buckets. Charlie Buckets was probably the 12th guy off the bench. And Matt Kelly was probably 12B. Okay. <laughs> right? And you look at kids like that who are overlooked and overlooked. And it's obvious that he put the work in. And he was determined that 
we're not going to let some travel basketball coach determine what's going to happen to me down the road. That's right. Because I'm telling you, I'll take him on my team every single day on both sports. And you watch him at basketball court. Plays it just like he plays football, man. He's awesome. Andrew Stevens takes what is likely the final snap of the game there for Hammond, the only snap that he has taken. And that's going to wrap things up. Skyhawks will move to 2-0 and on the year. Porter Gallup scored first, looked strong in the first quarter. Then Hammond scored 54 unanswered and captures our first of 10 Keating Friday Night Rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet in this strange 2020 season when we're not even in that press box. But a fantastic job by our crew to get this game here for you. And we're not quite done yet. We got to give that Lombardi trophy to the Hammond Skyhawks when we get you back. Fifty-four seven. The Skyhawks give up more points than they averaged allowing to a Skiza opponent last year. Believe it or not, that was only six, but they still win the game, fifty-four to seven, and improve to two and zero. Time for our player of the game, and if you've been with us from the start, you know who this is. Yep. The guys in the truck haven't even told me who this is, but I'm assuming it's C.J. Stokes. He's got four touchdowns tonight and 180 plus yards. And there is the junior, C.J. Stokes, in his 4-4 speed. 68-yard touchdown run was the longest for him, but four of them all told. Pushing up towards 200 yards, now seven touchdowns in two weeks for the junior running back, C.J. Stokes the third. Speed, vision, and power. He's got it all. Let's crunch, Here's crunch some numbers. High school media poll preseason poll out in 4A. It's for Dorchester. Dropped down in Berkeley coming in top 10 to a Timberland without their head coach many, many years. Art Craig who moved over to hand hand. That's one big storyline this year. So many new coaches in new locations. Yep. We talked about this a little bit earlier. Art Craig wins wherever he goes. You got to think Hanahan will yep. benefit from Art Craig being on those sidelines. Quickly. Hammond beat Porter Gow the last 13 times they played, now 14. The average score in those games, about 40 to seven. This one right along the same line. Eric Kimry just keeps it rolling over there. His team is 2-0 on the year. In his now 16 year career with the Skyhawks, Kimry is 184 and <laughs> 18. He gets the trophy presentation after this. Keating Friday Night Rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet.
people who are gonna ask the problem. It's time to get that trophy. Technical difficulties, we're good to go. And as I was saying, everybody wants a trophy, so let's give one away. Especially when it looks like a Lombardi trophy and you're giving one to a football team. Hammond deserves it, 54-7. Here's Eric Kimry and crew. Hey, we're excited for these guys. Second game of the year to be 2-0. and I'm proud of these seniors. You know, we had a big senior class last year. 21 guys. A lot of guys played college football. But these are the guys that are the leaders this year. And they've got a great opportunity to have another great season. So we're excited. Thank you, guys. Run. Yeah, that was one of the cooler <laughs> celebrations that we've seen, and maybe that's exactly what happens now, right? You take it, Kimry does a nice job kind of bringing in the leaders of his team, and then they run it over to their teammates. So, awesome deal. CJ Stokes going home in his flip flops. <laughs> he deserves it. There Here's we got it. Coming up for Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. First Baptist will be featured, another one of the top skis of teams in the area. We'll have them next week. Also on the schedule in October, we've got a new head coach at Wando. We'll see him, James Island as well. Ten weeks of Keating roofing, Friday Night Rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Thanks to all our sponsors for making Friday Night Rivals possible. Wouldn't be able to do it without you. We just told you who's next week. It is Ben Lippin and First Baptist. Ben Lippin, the team that Hammond beat last week. And First Baptist, another excellent skiza team down here in the Low Country. 54 7, your final score tonight. Hammond wins it after their drive down from Columbia. In about 45 minutes, ABC News 4 at 11, Friday night rivals will have a complete rundown of the scores from around the Low Country. See you next week, Keating Rivals, Friday Keating Roofing. I only did that once. See you next week on Keating Roofing Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruise Chevrolet. For Dean Stevens and Darren Goldwater, talk to you later.